the 018, mm -hmm. Jean Alesi and the Phoenix Grand Prix with that and Senna, I mean, that was, and Pirelli's, and we should, Pirelli yes. were a major part of that. But then the 019 with this interesting nose mm. appeared at the Monaco Grand Prix, and guess what? Jean was brilliant again that weekend. So that's the nose, the nose is what I think you, the, the you nose, love about that yeah, car. Yeah, I mean, this is the car that set the fashion for high noses, and you know, that extends now to you know, all of Formula One, most single seaters, even you know, LMP1 endurance cars at Le Mans has a high nose. So it's a concept that's really carried over, and it was something people were playing with in the years before, like you say, with the 018, which was a fantastic car, but equally the Arrows, the Leighton House Marches. Mm -hmm. Everyone then was trying to do something more with the front wing, which yeah. had always been split by the nose cone. So what people had started to do was to actually remove the nose cone under the wing and maybe just raise a bit of the chassis, but no one had really kind of gone full bore with that concept. Mm. And it was Jean-Claude Mijot that really came up with the, the big change in this concept. And uh, I heard the story that he'd been away on holiday and was kind of, doodling and sketching and conceptualising a car that had a completely round cross-section, almost forgetting about the requirement for side pods and what have you. And when he came back, they put some aspect of that into the wind tunnel. And that's why you get this almost conical nose mm. of the Tyrrell 019, which was really the, the start of it. And that's where they started then to find some of the aerodynamic advantages in this high nose setup. What about the anhedral aspect of it? Dr. Harvey Postlethwaite, you know, technical director at the time, if anyone else had gone, you know, in an aero department had gone to the technical directors, I want to raise the whole front of the car, you know, five, ten inches off the ground, the designer said, no, central gravity is way too important. Mm. But Postlethwaite understood that the gains in aero would offset the uh, losses yeah. um, from the central gravity. Yeah. And that's what happened. So when we look at the car, we've got an uh, illustration of the standard car here. When you take the nose off, you can then see how high like the footwell area of the car is and how the suspension had to be repositioned and just how much space there is underneath mm. this area down to the ground, which was a quantum leap for anybody else because every other car used to be completely flat from all the way under the car, all the way under the driver's feet and often to the very tip of the nose, which would be absolutely flat to the base of the car. Mm.